Imagine waking up to a world covered in a blanket of white with snowflakes falling gently from the sky. This is everyday life for the people who live in the snowiest place on Earth. Aomori City, Japan. Some places in the city have gotten almost 80 feet of snow in a single year. But if this winter wonderland isn't your thing, don't worry. We can jump over to Lemnos, Greece, a beautiful island paradise with warm sunshine and crystal clear waters, where a single snowflake would be a pretty rare sight. It's safe to say Almori City and Lemnos have pretty different climates, so where in the world would you expect them to be? Maybe Almori City is somewhere near the frigid poles, while Lemnos is near the equator? Here's the thing, they're both in the temperate climate zone. In fact, they're both the same distance from the equator. And yet, their climates couldn't be more different. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the factors that shape climates and find out what makes Almori City and Lemnos seem like polar opposites. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to identify factors that impact a location's climate, and explain how these factors combine to create different climates. Let's get started! Climate describes the long-term weather patterns in an area. There are five different main climate types. Tropical, dry, temperate, continental, and polar. And each of these main climate types brings different weather, like the hot and humid weather of a tropical climate, or the cold and dry weather of a polar climate. But why? What makes different regions of the Earth have different climates? As we know, the Earth is a complex and interconnected system, so climate isn't just caused by one thing. The unique mix of different factors present at any given location are why there are so many different climates. A lot of these factors are tied to where on Earth's surface a location is. For example, latitude is a measure of a location's distance north or south of the equator, and it has a huge impact on a location's climate. But why do you think that is? I'll give you a hint. Think way back to what we learned about the causes of seasons. Then pause the video here and record your thoughts in your guided notes. Remember, the Earth is tilted on its axis, so while the Northern Hemisphere is getting direct sunlight, the Southern Hemisphere is getting indirect sunlight, and the other way around. But the equator is always getting direct sunlight, and the poles are really never getting direct sunlight. This is why low-latitude areas near the equator have hot climates year-round. As we move away from the equator and toward the poles, the climates gradually get colder for more of the year until we hit the high latitude areas that have cold climates year round. The shape of the earth at a location impacts its climate too. Landforms like mountains and valleys change how air masses move around. They can trap humidity and create lots of precipitation or disrupt air masses and lead to dry climates. Elevation, or the height of an area compared to sea level, also impacts climate. Remember, as we move higher in Earth's atmosphere, the air becomes less dense. Thinner air can hold less heat, and cooler air can hold less humidity. So the higher you go, the colder and drier it usually gets. Continentality plays a role in determining climate too. Continentality is a measure of how a location's climate is impacted by its distance from the sea. Areas near the coast are often cooler and more humid, with more consistent weather throughout the year. 
On the other hand, inland areas tend to be warmer and drier, with weather patterns that change a lot through the seasons. This also connects to how patterns of prevailing winds in the atmosphere shape the climate. The places the wind travels through before reaching a location can change the air it brings with it. For example, let's look at this map. If the wind was blowing from the south, how would you expect it to change the weather? What if it was blowing from the north? If it was blowing from the south, it would be coming from over the sea. This would move a humid maritime air mass over the coast, likely causing precipitation. But if it was blowing from the north, it would bring the dry continental air mass with it, likely causing clear skies and big temperature changes. And the movement of the oceans themselves influences the climate too. Ocean currents help circulate heat around the Earth. Just like global wind patterns, ocean currents tend to move warm water from around the equator towards the poles, and move cold water from the poles towards the equator. This helps to regulate the temperature of coastal regions. Now, let's put this all together to think like meteorologists and see if we can figure out why Lemnos, Greece, and Aomori City, Japan are so different. They're both at the exact same latitude, so we know that can't be it. They're also both coastal, so their continentality can't be it either. Let's look at the factors that make them different. Most of Lemnos has a low elevation above sea level. It has a couple mountains, but none are very tall. On the other hand, Aomori City sits beside a nearby mountain range with some peaks that reach over 5,000 feet. How do you think this difference in elevation could be impacting their climates? Pause the video here and record your thoughts in your guided notes. Air tends to cool at higher elevations, so it makes sense that Aomori City would be much colder than Lemnos. We're starting to figure it out. But the thing is, higher elevations usually have lower humidity too. So why is Lemnos dry, but Aomori City is snowy? Aomori City receives prevailing northwesterly winds that blow in cold air from over the sea. Cold air plus lots of humidity? Sounds like a perfect recipe for lots of precipitation and clouds by the time those winds reach Japan. In fact, those prevailing winds are why Japan is the snowiest country on Earth. On the other hand, Lemnos often receives prevailing northeasterly winds, which blow from continental Europe. Since they're coming from an area farther from the sea, they carry little humidity, which explains the dry climate. Even though Lemnos and Aomori City share some characteristics like their latitude and their continentality, the combination of all these other factors result in them having significantly different climates. In our interconnected Earth system, just one tiny change in the atmosphere or on the surface can have some pretty huge impacts. So let's review what we learned today. You now know that the climates on Earth are impacted by many factors, including latitude, topography, elevation, continentality, prevailing winds, and ocean currents and that each of these factors can combine in different ways to create many unique climates. Be sure to complete the questions and extension activities that go with this lesson to practice thinking about climate like a meteorologist. And remember, in earth science as in life, you rock! See you next time! Hey.